I had a buddy one time tell me about a preacher preached at the Methodist church. And he, there was a couple of water there, and he drunk it, and a lady in the back almost passed out because she couldn't believe he drunk the baptistry. <laughs> I'll let you take the baptistry with you tonight. <laughs> but it is a blessing to be here, and I so appreciate the hospitality that you've given to me, and I appreciate the kind words and just the time together, and look forward to all we can do to accomplish and try to help reach the world with the gospel. And uh, that's uh, what it's all about. I also appreciate the heat wave that you've brought in this week for me. And uh, that is a blessing. I've been watching your weather. And a few days ago, I told my wife, I said, it is colder than Nancy Pelosi's heart out there. I don't know how I'm going to be able to stand it. And so I appreciate you warming it up a little bit. <clears throat> but it is good, uh, again, to be back with you. I'll share a little bit of my, our testimony and how we came to where we are. And then I'll tell you a little bit about what we do and how I feel like the Lord has led us in that. Uh, I have always loved media. I have always enjoyed graphic design <clears throat> and playing with those things. I mean, I was on the newspaper staff in eighth grade. I was on the yearbook. I, I did the newspaper throughout high school. I just loved all that stuff. Uh, after I graduated high school, I went to the local newspaper there in town and just, I said, do y'all have any jobs I can do? And uh, the guy said, I tell you what, we do have a job. He said, uh, it was in the production aspect of the newspaper. He said, we've got a lady out on maternity leave. She'll be out for three months, so you can have a job for three months. And I said, thank you. He said, now, please understand, before we even start, it's only for three months. I said, yes, sir. Five and a half years later, when I left there, I was the production manager for the newspaper. <laughs> And so I've read, the Lord gave me lots of great experience. And uh, it's amazing when you look back over your life and see God putting pieces in place. Amen. At times, you didn't even realize there was a puzzle. Yeah. And God's already putting it in place. And God's already getting things ready. My wife and I got married. She's from South Carolina. And I'm from North Carolina. She's from the other side of South Carolina. <laughs> uh, the coast, almost. And uh, we got married. And we moved to Georgia. And we had a youth pastor position there. And we was there about a year and a half. And uh, Lord, uh, we left from there. And just praying about what we should do. In the meantime, I've been doing some graphic design. Uh, when I was in Statesville, North Carolina, the church I grew up in, when I was in about 19 years old, Dr. Scott Caudill came. And he was our pastor. He was my pastor there. And uh, so he would always encourage me because he knew I did a little new uh, graphic design work in the newspaper. So he began encouraging me to do some things. To, to sharpen my skills a little bit so I would do some things and help him. And lo and behold, as it uh, would turn out, and again, uh, the Lord puts puzzle pieces in place. When we left the church we were at in Georgia, Dr. Caudill had in that time moved to Georgia. He was pastoring a church that was about 15 minutes from our house. And I told my wife, I said, now look, we can ride all over this town looking for a church to join because we believe we ought to be in church. I said, well, we can just drive 15, 20 minutes up the road and go to where Dr. Caudill is. And so that's what we did. And I, we worked there with him, began praying about the next phase of ministry for us and what the Lord would have us to do and sought the Lord's will. And it wasn't until we fully surrendered ourselves that God opened the door. And God opened the door to Louisiana. And I thought, well, that's a strange thing. <laughs> now, Please don't, I want to, I'm just going to be real transparent with you, but I don't want you to think wrongly of me, but I had only thought of United States church planting as out west. And I don't even own a pair of cowboy boots. <laughs> so I knew I wouldn't fit in. I didn't, I didn't know how that would work. But God put us in South Louisiana. We were about an hour north of New Orleans. And we, it was across the lake from New Orleans. And that was the place for us. God, I don't know how God knew where we needed to be, but we were there, and we worked, and we tried our best to get a church planted. We tried, our, but it felt like we had a revolving door of people. I told my wife one time, I said, I can preach, or I, actually, I didn't say I can. I said I have. <laughs> I said I have preached the same Father's Day message three years in a row because it's all new people every year. <laughs> There's none of them except for y'all, and y'all hear it all. Of I mean, y'all been on deputation with me, so you know I preach the same things over and over. But I said, it's just a revolving door of people in and out. And we worked and we knocked doors and we did everything that I knew to do there for five and a half years. And there came a point where God began to work on my heart. That it was, 
we had done all we could, could do there. And I knew what I wanted to do. But I didn't know how that would work. I wanted to use media and graphics and those type things to help the missionaries. Now, at this point, we're already with Macedonia. Uh, we've been with Macedonia for years, uh, almost 16 years, be this uh, September, actually, be 17 years uh, this August. And so we've been with Macedonia for, for a long time. Uh, and we were with Macedonia then. But I didn't know how to go about doing a ministry of media and graphics. And I mean, I didn't want to start my own business because I didn't want to have to charge the missionaries those kind of prices to do that work. I, I didn't want to do that. Uh, but I didn't. How do you call your home office and say, hey, y'all need my help. I'm coming up there to help you. You know, I figured that was something you should probably be invited to do. And then on the other hand, I have to tell my wife that it's time to move again. I mean, we've been settled in five and a half years here. We've enjoyed it. It's been great. We have our own home. The kids are in school. She's teaching in the Christian school. Uh, things are going really well. And I remember it just got to the point where I knew that was it. We had a Sunday morning service. Nobody showed up. It was just my family again. And on the way home, I, I forget how I did it, but I tried to drop a little subtle hint and just allude to the fact, you know, brother, that uh, maybe we need to pray about, maybe we need to think about something else. Maybe this is it. And I'll never forget riding home and my wife said, well, you know, I've been praying and in my devotions, I really feel like a big change is about to come. <laughs> Amen. I said, what did you say? As I tried to pull the van off the side of the road, you know. She said, yeah, I feel like there's a change about to come in our, in our lives. I said, we need to talk when we get home. So we talked, and we were in full agreement of what we wanted to do, of, how the, of what the plan was. Still didn't know how. Still didn't know how this was going to work, uh, how we was going to make this happen. Uh, I had some ideas, but they were only my ideas. And it was probably about the middle of November at this time. And so I told her, I said, well, look, I don't want Dr. Call, our pastor, to think we're quitters. Because if there's one thing I don't ever want to be, it's a quitter. Right. I said, I don't want him to think we're quitters. They've invested a lot in us to be here. They've invested a lot in the church to get going. I said, so, and there's no need to talk to him about this right now. Let's get through the holidays. Let's get through Thanksgiving and Christmas. Let's wait till after the first of the year. And then let, we'll sit down with him and make a game plan. And uh, we'll figure out what we're going to do next. I thought, that's, the, that's all I know to do right now. We'll, we'll just come up with a plan then. So we said, okay, it's Sunday afternoon. We settled down for our Sunday afternoon rest and, and a little re relaxation. And not long after I sit down in my chair, my phone rings. And I pick it up. And it says, Dr. Scott called. Now, I have two fears. Somebody's done told something on me. Because why is he calling me on Sunday? I mean, this must be bad if he feels like he's got to call me on Sunday afternoon to deal with this because he's got church that morning. He's got church that, after, that evening. He's a busy man. He's pastoring a big, thriving church. This is not good for him to be calling me. And so I had all this fear going through my head. And he begins to chit-chat. He's making small talk and very friendly and all those things. And I'm thinking, preacher, would you please just hurry up? <laughs> and I'm ready. Whatever it is, I know I haven't done it. I hadn't made any Facebook posts and it would be questionable. <laughs> I hadn't done any of those things. And so I'm thinking, please just go ahead and let me have it. Whatever it is. And he says this. He says, Brother Campbell. He said, the Lord has dealt with my heart, and I'm going to resign the church here, and I'm going to go to Macedonia and be the general director, and I was wondering if you'd come help me. <laughs> and I said, you ain't going to believe this. He said, brother, are you laughing at me? And I said, no, preacher, you ain't going to believe this. I said, me and my wife, less than 30 minutes ago, just got through talking about this and about moving to the home office to help. And so there was no doubt in my mind from that angle, God had worked this out. But then I really wanted to be sure, preacher, that this was of God. Because there's a lot of people that say they have a ministry of God and say they have something that God has called them to, 
And to be honest with you, some of that stuff is so outside the bounds, I'm not sure about it. And I began to pray, God, is this really something that you would call somebody to? God, is this really something that you would call somebody to do? And I was reading Exodus chapter 31 one day. And the Bible says in Exodus chapter number 31, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, See, I have called by name Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. And I have filled him with the Spirit of God, in wisdom, and in understanding, and in knowledge, and in all manner of workmanship, to devise cunning works, to work in gold, and in silver, and in brass, and in cutting of stones, to set them, and in carving of timber, to work in all manner of workmanship. You know what God did? God called Bezalel to be the craftsman for the tabernacle. And the Bible says, I have called by name. This was a specific calling of God for this man to use his talents for the house of God. And I believe God spoke to my heart and said, if I can use Bezalel that way, I can use you with today. I said, praise God. Amen. So we went to the home office, and people say, well, what do you do there? And I say, well, it depends on the day of the week. And a lot of times. But here's the way I feel about it. Here's what I feel like. If a team wins the Super Bowl, they just had the Super Bowl a few weeks back, I believe. If a team wins the Super Bowl, I look this up. Do you know how many Super Bowl rings that team gets that they can pass out? It's about 150. You know what's interesting to me about that? There's only 53 men on an active NFL roster. There's only 53 men that take the field at any time to play the game. That tells me for every player that gets a ring, there's two people who you don't know about that get a ring. They all share the victory. Yep. I'm a behind-the-scenes guy. I prefer it that way, to be honest with you. I just soon sit in the back corner of a room as anywhere else. And God lets me be behind the scenes and work to help the missionaries. For the missionaries of Macedonia, I'll do any graphic design work they need free of charge for them. I have churches that support me. They make it to where I'm full time to be able to be in Macedonia that I can give my time to those missionaries. So all they've got to do is call and say, I need a prayer card. I need a letterhead. I need a video. I need this. I need, I need, I need. Now they have to pay for it to be printed. But I can't afford to do all that. But I can, I can design it, we can go over it, I can print, I can get it printed for them, and it takes a tremendous load off of that missionary. Yes, it does. They can call me and say, hey, my pastor changed. Can you change that? I can change it and send it back to them. And you say, is that really a big deal? Can you imagine starting deputation and knowing that you needed prayer cards and a letterhead and a banner and a display and a video and all these things that you're going to go into a church and they're going to look for? That is overwhelming. And it's expensive if you have to hire somebody to do it. That's right. And God has blessed me that I'm able to do that. And in the meantime, God has also blessed me that I'm able to help a lot of churches. You say, how do you do that? With their graphic design work. I'll help our missionaries on the field with their church plans. Brother John McKinney up in uh, Montana. I help him with his graphic design work. He'll call me and he'll say, hey, I've got a new uh, theme for this year. Can you help me with my banners and stuff? Just last week, I helped a church in Pennsylvania with banners. I helped a church in Indiana uh, design a track and get it printed. I helped a missionary in South Africa with prayer cards and a banner. And it uh, seems like there's a few others I'm missing. But all around the world, I looked it up at the end of last year, and we had been blessed to help about 25 different missionaries in some way or 25 different churches in some way with graphic design. And I don't take credit for myself, but what it is is God is helping us get the gospel out. Right, amen. I'm able to help. I had I helped a little lady with a book cover up last week too. But I had a pastor call me several weeks ago. He said, "Hey, I've had a great idea for a track for a long time. But I don't know how to get anything done with it." I said, "Let me know, and I'll help you." And we got that gospel track printed. He's passing them out, and he's calling me back, saying, "Hey, we had somebody get saved. Hey, we had somebody join the church. Hey, we had it." And I just had a little part in it. And so God is opening doors for us to do that. While at Macedonia, we also do all the work for Macedonia. 
Uh, all the graphic design work. If you've ever seen the Focus on the Field magazine that we print, I do all the work, all the graphic design work on that. Of course, I operate the radio station. And uh, several, about a year ago, Dr. Carl had another idea. And, then, you know, I told you this point, and the idea scared me. Hmm. One of the issues we've all, we've talked about for years is training for the missionaries. They just don't seem to have as much training as they used to. But their own deputation, they've already been through some Bible college. How in the world can we help them with more training? Well, we were ahead of the game by about a month because we had the idea, or I didn't have the idea, but they had the idea to start an online missionary institute. And we launched that back in the fall. And uh, we're working on that. We're working on making classes available specifically geared towards missions that these uh, missionaries can look at and view and watch and go through these courses. Right now we have six work, uh, online. I'm working on the next six. But God is using us in all these different ways. And God is opening doors uh, just to do all sorts of things. It's, it's awesome to uh, see all the different ways that we get to help and get to be part of it. And so I trust. Uh, and then we also do the task of assisting Dr. Carl in whatever uh, we can do there. And so when people say, what do you do? I, I really say, well, it depends on the day of the week because my list changes on a daily basis. But it's a thrill to be able to help. It's a thrill to me when somebody calls and says, Brother Campbell, I've had this idea for a long time and I just don't know how to make it happen. And to be able to say, look, well, I'm going to help you make it happen. We'll make it work together. Good. And God takes us and does that. And uh, it's just a blessing to see the final product. You, you've got Brother Wesley Hutchins' prayer cards back there. I helped him with those cards. Helped him with his letterhead that he sends prayer letters to you on a regular basis. Uh, I helped him with his video. I think, I don't know if he showed that when he was here one day. It's always fun whenever we have a missionary from Macedonia come to the church in, uh, in Georgia, our home church, Old Sawani, and I've done their video, and I have even I do some of their voiceovers. And so it'll play and my voice will start and people will start looking at me like, that's, we weren't expecting that. Now I think they kind of expect it. Uh, in addition to our radio station, we have a five-minute daily radio broadcast that I'm responsible for that plays all around the world. It's on FBN. It's on about six different stations, but it's on FBN. And so it's on all of their stations. I forget how many stations they have all around the world. And so we are blessed to uh, just have a part in getting the gospel out. One of the great things we do is the internet radio. And uh, pastor asked me to talk about that a minute. It can be as big or as small as you want. You can put as much work into it as you want, or you can put it on autopilot and let it go as much as you want. How much effort it takes depends on how much programming you have, because you're going to have to load those programs if you want, I mean, you can go live on there if you want to uh, any any morning, have somebody on there talking. Um, there's a way, and we'll figure all that out if you want to. How you can broadcast your services live on there uh, every Sunday, every Wednesday if you want. Uh, there's all kinds of options for what you can do with it. And the Lord will open all those doors, and he'll give you, as you go, you'll have new ideas. But it's a great tool because anywhere somebody has internet, they can listen. They, you, you can have a website that they can go to and type in ours on the internet, on, on the web is macedoniaradio.org or there's an app you can have on your phone and I can just pull up the Macedonia Radio and just with a touch of a button that quickly, it'll get ready to start playing. So does it connect? Well, I say it with, there it goes. But, uh, yeah. And so just like that, if they have cell service somewhere, they can play the station. Uh, you, can have, you can have it on the App Store for Apple. You can have it on the Google App Store. Uh, and you would be amazed, amazed where they have cell phones and cell service. I mean, it's so interesting. I see some pictures of our missionaries in Africa where they don't even have houses, but they're walking around with phones. Yeah. And they're listening to stuff on their phones. They can be listening to your broadcast. It's just a matter of getting it out there so all the world can hear it. Uh, and you can play the music. You can load your own music. Uh, you're under 
It is free to do whatever you want to do with it. You're under uh, no obligation from anybody else to accept anything else. Uh, you can put your own things on there and do whatever you want to with it. And again, it can be as much or as little as you want it to be. Uh, as much work or as little I spend, I do spend time on it every week, um, but it's not a great deal of time. I mean, overall, it's probably about an hour a week, really. And so that's not too much to get everybody loaded. Now, it's hard whenever guys are late with their broadcasts, and I'm up at 4 5 o'clock in the morning trying to get their broadcast loaded for that day. I prefer that they don't send them late, but sometimes they do. But uh, it's just completely up to you. Now, the good news is with technology, I can remote into that computer. It's on my desk in Houston, Georgia. And I sat over here last night in your fellowship hall and logged into it and loaded some broadcasts for next week. And so you can do that, whoever you put in charge of that, uh, they can log in and do that. But uh, maybe you have a specific question that I didn't answer about that. Um, anybody have a specific question about the radio? Is it Sometimes I just discovered that you can mention it on the phone. Mm -hmm. You can dial their phone number. Yes, sir. And listen to it through the phone. And I can listen to my service truck. I guess that doesn't use data. And it doesn't cost anything. Uh, if it's internet, is that the data thing? Or? Right. Yes, sir. So. With the music streaming, it's going to be very small amounts of data. Mm -hmm. It's not like a video playing. Mm -hmm. But it will use some data. I don't know about, I've never done the dial in. I've seen where FBN advertises it, but it may be that that's an option. Um, if somebody wanted to do that, yeah, we can look for it. Yeah, and again, I'll use it work as a radio. So anyway, I just started using it. I can go from here to share it and then listen to it. Yes. It's a pretty neat thing. It did try out for once or twice through the telephone. Uh -huh. Yeah. I'll try to study up on that. I don't even know if it's worth an option. The internet is something that charges aren't that big a deal. Right. Yeah, it's a small amount. It doesn't use a whole lot of data. Sure. Uh, but it does use sure. some. But yeah, that may be a possibility. And somebody doesn't have a smartphone or an internet connection, they can log in that way. So I'll look for, I'll try to study up on that a little bit. Anybody else? That's a good idea, uh, what Brother Irving brought up, because I know some people that would need that, mm -hmm. for sure. You know, I have some elderly folks that I know that don't live here in Buffalo, right. uh, but, but the, and they would like to utilize that very thing. We'll look into it. Okay. Now, I say that, and so I'm, I'm not trying to be rude, but I'm going to put it on the list right here so that I don't forget Because I do have that happen every now and then. And I do keep my to-do list on my phone because people say, can you do this? Can you do this? Can you help me with this? And I say, sure, I'd be glad to. And I'll forget all about it. And so I want to be able to mark it down and put a note to uh, jog my memory every now and then. Dr. Carlton walked in my office the other day. He said, hey, you know what I think would be a good idea? And he told me his, his next idea. And I said, you know, that's already on this green list over here. <laughs> I said, I have this list and this list and this list and this list. Now, to any other questions? If I, I'll be glad to answer any that I can. All right. Thank y'all so much. Thank you, Preacher. Appreciate it. Let me just say something real quick and then we'll go. Um, <clears throat> Probably the...